thank you, Lois, and welcome to worship this morning on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost, which also happens to be Independence Day. Um, we are not, however, independent from God. We are always dependent on him, and Paul reminds us this morning of our dependence on him, that in our weakness, God's power shines. So we turn to him and confess our tendency to want to go our own way as we gather this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call of the minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as you are able to sing our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles 
that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Joanne Junstra has our reading this morning. First reading is from Ezekiel 2, 1 through 5. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Please read responsibly from Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the poor and the indolent rich, and of the riches of the brother. Second reading comes from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brothers of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not held all his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about the villages teaching. 
He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and give them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whatever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil, many who were sick, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. God's call, our response, God's power. There is a form of song that originated in Africa that's called Call and Response, where the leader calls out the verse and the people respond. Kind of like how we learn songs at camp, where you don't have words or music in front of us. Well, this morning, we have examples of two calls and responses. One is the call of Ezekiel, who uh, was an Old Testament prophet in Israel. And the other example is of the response to Jesus' teaching and then following that, his call and the response of the 12 disciples. In Ezekiel's case, he had just witnessed a vision, a fantastic vision that I'm not going to go into here this morning, but it had left him, brought him to his knees in awe and fear of God. And then God says, well, get up out of your feet and speak my words to the people, saying, thus says the Lord God. And whether they believe you or not, whether they hear you or not, because they are a rebellious people, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Jesus came to his hometown to teach and to preach and to do works and deeds of power. But the people there were offended. Who is this? This upstart hometown kid who we know as a carpenter whose scandalous birth story we know. Mark only mentions that they say, talk about his mother, right? So what was that all about, his unwed mother? We know him since he was a little kid. So what's he going to do for us? Which Jesus responds, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown. You may have had experience with this. I know a fellow who used to be a well driller who grew up to be a mayor. Brian doesn't happen to be here this morning, but so I can talk about him, right? Who is this upstart well drill, driller that's going to be mayor of our community? A research by the name of Mylan Wall observed that in rural communities, many people um, refrain from stepping into leadership roles because of the risk, quote, of the reality that someone someday will try to take them down a notch or two or even remove them from office. I know about you, but I've known those kinds of people on both sides of the leadership. Uh, it's all too true in rural communities. So Jesus in his hometown found that he could do hardly anything. Heal a couple of people, that's it. So he went off and started to teach and preach in other communities where he would be heard, and then he started to gather other people because he couldn't do it on his own. And he chose not to do it on his own, so he sent out others two by two into other communities 
to do what he had been called to do. And people responded. And people were healed. The demons were, dwelt, were, were cast out. And Jesus' rejection led to the gospel's multiplication. Paul wrote, God's power is made perfect in my weakness. God's power is made perfect in my weakness. Through my weakness, God's power shines. There are some scholars who say that Ezekiel fell to his knees because he was exhausted from the work that he had been doing. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think it's more out of awe and uh, amazement at the vision, but okay. We know exhaustion, right? Especially in our current climate, in more ways than one. It's exhausting being involved in a rural community, being a farmer, or being any part of this enterprise. At Bud Cleppin's memorial service, Brian wrote a, a, a read an excerpt, uh, read a poem by the former columnist Paul Harvey, and I have an excerpt here this morning for you. God said, I need someone to be willing to get up before dawn and milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town, stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. Sound familiar to anybody? Exhausting. But God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Made perfect in your weakness. Made perfect in your exhaustion. In your perfect, in your ability, inability to get the job done. For when I am weak, Paul says, then I am strong because of God. talks about having a thorn in the flesh. Nobody has determined what that thorn is, whether it's a, a mental defect, a physical uh, ailment, a bad habit. I don't know. He prayed to God to keep it, take it away, but God kept it there, Paul says, to keep him humble. And if you read Paul at all, he's not necessarily a humble man all the time. But Paul says, God gave me this thorn to keep me humble so that God's power might shine through me and so that others might take me more seriously because of my humility, because of my weakness. In October of 1776, only three days, three days, three months into the Revolutionary War, it was very apparent that we were losing and our forefathers, instead of brazenly boasting about our power and independently going forth on their own power, chose to ask for help. And they invited in, among others, the French. Because of that, not only did they win the war, they established a relationship that was ongoing and which led to a gift, a hundred years later, of an emblem to, that celebrated not only the victory a hundred years before, but the relationship between our country and France, as well as, not a whole lot of people know this maybe, the abolition of slavery that had taken place just recently in this country. You know about the Statue of Liberty. I talked to a seminary student just completing her internship uh, this year, this past week rather, and uh, she's going to be working as a youth and family, children youth and family minister as she waits for a call as a pastor. And she talked about the fact that she had only, like just a few years ago, discovered that she had ADHD, that, that attention deficit disorder, that 
we see in many kids these days. And we talked about the fact that her having that disorder helped her relate to other youth and children who have that disorder and helped her to teach other people how to relate and, um, and better teach those who have that disorder. In our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. One might talk about a, a, a person who's blind, who makes her way on the street every day with her cane, relatively independent of others, and then just deci decides to go visit a pound and take on an animal to be her service, her seeing eye dog, thereby giving him his freedom and enhancing her own. Our weakness is God's power. God, I believe, has given us, has blessed us, I will be so bold to say, with both strengths and weaknesses so that his power might shine to us in both. When we are exhausted, God moves us to reach out and help to empower other people's gifts. Just telling, talking to Lois this morning about our little escapade, their escapade, down to um, um, help feed and provide laundry for uh, people living in homelessness and poverty in Two Falls, through church on the street. And the women here decided, well, they were not sure that they could put a whole meal together, and so they'd ask Ryan to put one together at the store, which totally pleased the people down who ate it, but also turned out pleasing Ryan, because he was able to, to, uh, um, to do something good for, for people uh, who were in that situation. Sounds like it could lead to even more um, exciting uh, escapades in the future. So, to our weakness, God's power shines as we share our gifts and lift our own gifts and weaknesses up to God. His power shines. Speaking of shining, with Moses, who would God call him to go rescue his people, Israel? from bondage, from slavery, said, God, I'm not a, pu a public speaker. To which God responds, I am. That's God's name in the Bible, right? I am Yahweh. When we're tempted to complain, I am not this, I'm not that, I can't do this, I can't do that. God says, I am. Amen. The most powerful example of powerlessness is the cross. Jesus rejected, dejected, ridiculed, slain, Raised up three days later as the ultimate example of God's power for life and death, all creation. God calls us this day by our baptism to go out and be witnesses to Him in word and deed in our own community and in other communities, despite the risks. And whether people listen or not, they will know that there has been a prophet among them. God's call, our response, God's power. Amen.
rise and sing our own call and response this morning. Listen, God is calling. We haven't sung that for a while. Let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, rather. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He has saved me to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, uh, we pray for, and I'll explain this more later, uh, Kristen Dinas Natzer and Caitlin Natzer, who are entering into mission. Um, also praying for my sister Anne, who's had a diagnosis this week that um, will require some attention. Let us come before God, triune God, in prayer. God of all, through the water of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescued us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery and corruption. 
direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of many nations, hear the cries of indigenous peoples throughout our world who have been deprived through the years of their native lands and cultures. Comfort those who mourn missing and murdered women and children. Inspire your people to works of justice and mercy on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy. God Almighty, your power is made perfect in our weakness. Help us to acknowledge our shortcomings and invite others to share their gifts and abilities that together as one body we may bring you glory, Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you become vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear. Bring wholeness to those in need, especially Anne and others in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Sending God, we ask that you would be with Kristen and Caitlin and also Zachary as they enter into mission uh, on your behalf. Keep them safe in their travels and powerful in their witness. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world with the flame of your love. We pray for your, our outreach ministries in this congregation. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks in every time and place that you call forth prophets to move us toward freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. All these prayers we lift up to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you always. Also with you. Share that peace with one another. Highlight some announcements for you. So I mentioned uh, Kristen and Caitlin. So Kristen is Jim and Brenda's daughter, um, a registered nurse in Marshall, Minnesota. Her, her daughter, Caitlin, uh, the two of them, uh, uh, Caitlin's in her second year of nursing at North College Nursing School. Uh, they're they're going to be traveling to Tanzania, East Africa, with a group from Hope Ministries, and will be working with the health concerns in Tanzania dealing with children and adults both, returning on July 26th. So uh, we keep those in our prayers. Also, Zachary, who uh, leaves probably within a week or so for his campus ministry position uh, in Denver, in the Denver area, and so our prayers go with him. And then a little, pers and a little personal note found out this week that uh, uh, my sister who's had some breathing problems uh, recently uh, was diagnosed with a cancerous tumor in her lung. Um, very good candidate for surgery, which will probably happen later on this month, um, which means I will probably be leaving uh, later on this month to help attend to her, both uh, time for surgery and probably for the recovery. Um, and so our prayers, ask uh, prayers for, for, um, for all of us as we move through this time. Let's see, what else is going on? Community VBS, uh, if you can help out, please uh, let Daisha Bergley, Daisha, Daisha Mitchell know, um, or me, if you can help with uh, VBS as a volunteer. I think most of the primary positions are filled. I know that we will be working, doing our part on um, Friday, whatever the Friday is after the 12th, um, and uh, the 16th, that'll be our day to serve meals and to uh, fill other leadership roles uh, for VBS. Anything else that I, is, I'm forgetting for announcements this morning? Welcome back the, uh, the Brown family after their, uh, their trip. Uh, 
good to see people come back and immediately come, come to worship and to thank God for safe travel. So, our, uh, God has given us many gifts along with our weaknesses. Uh, we give thanks to him uh, with our gifts and tithes. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and delight that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, to Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, Lord, for in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. 
receive it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated and you will be guided forward by our usher. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We close with a humble national hymn, This Is My Song. Peace, serve the Lord.